friends, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good week so far, staying healthy and staying strong. Hi, Leah. Nice to see you in the class. Jainiel Zahab, our members. Good to see everyone. Hi, Tamonish. Rupinder. Tanwisi. Good to see regular students as well. Uh, we are continuing today with reading. So two classes of reading today, the previous and this one again, focusing on skills and strategies to be confident, to answer questions correctly, make good use of the time and uh, get those nice high band scores. Uh, this lesson again is brought to you, of course, by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com on both of those websites. We have six original practice exams in our premium package. We're adding four more uh, in the next few months. And of course, we have lots of video lessons as well as interactive courses. Uh, the academic website looks like this with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package and for the general version it's the green background and you can click that big red button to join us there if you have questions students just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com also you can download our apps academic isles help download the app link it to your aehelp.com account uh, General IELTS Help, link it to your gieltshelp.com account for a really great learning experience. Okay, so again, reading today. Tomorrow we will do a task one with members, and then we will do some uh, speaking part two uh, for everyone. Those are tomorrow's classes, so make sure to come back and practice there. All right, Hassan, nice to see you in this class as well. I'm glad to see that you're being studious. Uh, reading students is really one of the best ways uh, to improve your vocabulary, your grammar, and your overall comprehension of English. So uh, reading is an absolute must uh, when you are learning another language especially. So it's great that you are being super studious all right uh here we go it century you can become a member by clicking the join button beside the subscribe button on the channel if you don't see the join button send me an email and um i will uh give you some more information z i'm happy you were in the last class it's great that you're in this one as well okay so here we go um Reading passage three from our ninth test. This is kind of a sneak peek of our brand new exams that are coming out uh, a little bit later on. And uh, here we read the title, always read the title, The City of a Thousand Windows. Ooh, what could that be? All right, thanks to come. Okay, so a city of a thousand windows. So again, think about it. I mean... <laughs> I definitely get a visual image here, but I'm not sure how much more information I can think of. Uh, nevertheless, I will do my best. So what does that mean? So when I think about the title, City of a Thousand Windows, what comes to mind? Okay. Uh, Ferdov says maybe some kind of an ancient city. Amanjat says something with uh, many uh, buildings. Yeah, an ancient and maybe beautiful, right? All right. Some important part of history, uh, perhaps, Tamanish. Yeah, so a tourist place. an important historical site. Okay, that's great. So that's kind of all I get from this as well. So uh, what we can do to get some more information is just 
have a look at the questions. When we look at the questions, that will help us predict a little bit more. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do that. Let's take a look at the questions. So here we go. Complete the notes below. So again, it's a sentence completion or note completion. Choose no more than two words from the passage. So the words have to be uh, from the passage. Write your answer in boxes 27 to 32 on your answer sheet. So here we go. Uh, title of summary topic. Okay, so something about uh, this city of a thousand windows. Uh, beginning. So this type of question is definitely good to read before the passage. Now, don't spend a lot of time reading the question. Just kind of read over it. Don't just skim it. Okay, don't just skim read the question. So do get kind of an idea. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, and I don't think it's the, uh, the Silicon Valley, Omar Wadi, but hey, it might be a, not a bad guess. Okay, so the mythical origin of Barat involves a battle between two something concerning the affections of a certain woman named Tamor and Shpirag. They live uh, on today in the form of two something surrounding the city of Barat. Okay. So uh, now I know that we're talking about some city called Barat, um, and um, that already gives me a bit more information. Definitely some historical city, okay? Violence strikes. Barat is thought to be about 2,500 years old. Soon after this time, when it was a Macedonian fortress, the something destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Later, Barat was given the name something because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. So there we go. Now we've got a bit more idea here. Something in the Byzantine Empire, an ancient city that has gone through a lot of strife. Uh, guarding Barat, the fortress on top of Asum River, North Bank, is known as the something of the Barat. It is over 1,500 years old and was repaired approximately 800 years ago. It once held many religious institutions, including a something and 20 Christian houses of worship. All right, so it's a diverse city with multiple religions. Hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, now we have some yes, no, and not given questions, uh, 33 to 39. Okay, uh, so uh, we don't read these. We just pass through them. And then we have question 40. So choose the correct letter A, B, C, or D, multiple choice. Uh, we don't worry about the answers because we don't know the right one. The rest are confusing, just like true, false, not given. So we only read this. Which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage three? So uh, when we read this question, which, which of the following phrases describes the main aim? We know two important points. We have to think about what is the main goal of this passage. And secondly, we realize that we cannot skim read for this answer because we have to understand the passage to answer question 40. Okay? All right. So, good. I see lots of good answers there. Never read the true, false, not givens. Yeah, because we don't really know what the information is yet. So now we know it's an ancient city uh, somewhere in Macedonia, Byzantine Empire, 2,500 years ago. And of course, we know that we have to visualize, so we should picture all of this to help us remember, because we're going to have um, some historical visual imagery here. Uh, when you read some part of history, what is good to keep in mind? What kind of strategy will help you? So, <clears throat> so make sure to visualize. We talked about this last class. Uh, keep a visual catalog of the information. Uh, and here we can do a little bit more. So also when you are reading 
historical information, you can organize the information in what way? In what way? Because we realize, right, that we're talking about a city and we're going to have some, yeah, there we go, Beck John, very good. So some chronological information here. So organize the information uh, chronologically. It means according to the time. Okay, like 2,500 years ago, 2,000 years ago. I'm just giving you an example here now uh, in the future. Okay, so you can kind of keep this uh, chronological order of the information as well. So make sure you do that. Is that clear? So as soon as you realize that your reading passage is going to have historical information, make sure you have a visual catalog and a chronological catalog in your head. Okay, that will help you when you answer the questions. Okay, you do that actively. Okay, don't just do that passively, but do it actively. Do it like, okay, 2,500 years ago, I saw this war. 2,000 years ago, I saw this building. 1,000 years ago, I saw this king. Okay, so keep this information in your head. So here we go. Nice. Okay, everybody's got it. Happy to hear it. Fantastic. Thumbs up. Here we go, everyone. Uh, so let's learn about this city of a thousand windows uh, together. Let's read. Uh, make sure you read with me, okay? If you're just listening to me, then it's only a listening exercise. It's better to make it a reading exercise. So make sure to read with me, read aloud. And from the top, always read the title. Engage your visual mind, which is your entire back of your brain. Okay, and here we go. The city of a thousand windows. According to an Albanian legend, Barat, the city of a thousand windows, as it is affectionately known, was brought into being by a fight among the gods over the love of a woman. The two ancient giants represented by the nearby mountains, Tomor and Shparag, killed each other in the battle for the woman's heart. Emotionally distraught over the deaths, the woman cried unendingly. She cried so much that her tears of sorrow created the Osum River, which bisects Barat, and she drowned in this river of her own tears. Oh, what a sad story, but very powerfully visual. So uh, hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. So hopefully you're seeing these mountains. Okay, uh, you're sitting, seeing the kind of city, and there's another mountain here. And then, of course, there's a river, which is not surprising. Because rivers usually move in the valleys between mountains. And, of course, humans like to put cities in uh, these uh, valley basins along rivers for water supply. So hopefully you kind of see this. And then you see this, uh, this mountain is uh, Tamor, and this mountain is Shparag. Okay. And then uh, this, is, this river is, of course the woman's tears, bisecting the city here at the bottom. Is everybody kind of um, seeing that today? Hi, Eugen. Just like those emojis Eugen is showing us, the panda and stuff, uh, you want to be visual. So everybody seeing that kind of picture uh, from this, uh, let me see if I can, there's my picture. You can see it a little bit better, the mountains and that, yeah. Everybody sees uh, maybe these mountains aren't so happy, okay? All right. Okay, cool. So everybody's got that. Now, um, many of you probably realize that we got an answer to a question there as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, somebody asked me a really good question the other day. Uh, I think it was in an email. And they said, when I read a uh, an answer, should I stop and fill in the answer? So a lot of you probably realize that while you were reading that, um, you got a couple of um, answers here. So the beginnings, the mythical origin of Bharat involves a battle between two 
something. You probably got that answer. And then uh, the affections of a certain woman um, named Tamor and Spirag, they live on today in the form of two mountains surrounding the city, right? So you probably got the answer of gods and mountains. Okay, and here we're, here's where a lot of students go, yay, I, I, I got these answers and I'm going to jump to my answer sheet and quickly put these answers in there. Is that a good idea? Is it a good idea to stop your reading, jump to the questions, and quickly fill in those answers? Is that a good idea or not a good strategy? What do you think? It's an important question, and a clever student sent us an email about this. We actually talk about this in uh, our strategies in the course. Okay, so is it a good idea to stop and answer a question uh, when you think that you have seen the answer? and then go back to the passage. So a lot of you, I can see, are answering no. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, um, and a lot of you are saying, yeah, because um, it will uh, distract your reading flow. Yeah, so no, it's a bad idea. No, this is a bad idea. And I'm going to explain why, okay? There's actually a few reasons why. So a couple of you got one. First of all, uh, this will will interrupt your reading flow and you will lose the information. Now, here's a really good example of this. So um, remember that question 40? the multiple choice. It says, which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage three? This question becomes <clears throat> increasingly difficult if you keep interrupting yourself because you're going to lose the main aim of the passage uh, by the time you finish if you keep stopping to answer questions. Does that make sense? So it's hard to get the main aim of the whole passage if you keep stopping to answer questions. Okay, it's more difficult. Hope that makes sense. So that's one reason. So one reason is it will interrupt your reading flow and you will lose the information. Okay. Another uh, reason. <clears throat> okay, also, and this is an interesting one. Also, you may get a better answer later on. The first seemingly correct answer may not be the right one after you read the whole passage. The IELTS is like a college exam in that you have to choose the best answer as sometimes there may be uh, seemingly more than one okay this is another reason that you shouldn't stop all right because sometimes you'll keep reading and then suddenly you'll realize that the passage will say well the two mountains are no longer there because of mining activity in the region but these days they have been replaced by two statues okay so i don't think that's going to happen here but you never know, right? So now you have to go, oh, ooh, wait a second. So my first answer was actually wrong. Now I have to check, okay? So um, you can't be 100% sure of some of your answers until you actually read the whole passage. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's another reason why you shouldn't stop to answer because you might actually find a better answer later on for some questions in some cases. Is that clear? So it's another reason you should not stop to answer questions. And the third one, there's a third, it's always good things come in threes, right? Um, so there's a third reason. Um, if 
you realized that you likely have the answer, like gods and mountains, as the example in this case, um, <clears throat> it is very, very unlikely that you will forget this by the end of the passage. Smiley face. Um, yeah, so that's the third reason, okay? So if you realize that, hey, wait a second, I think I just read the answers here with gods and mountains, uh, you don't have to panic and quickly write those into your answer sheet because you will remember that at the end of the passage, okay? You don't have to read a book here. It's not a book report. I think most of us can hold on to these kinds of answers until we reach the end of the passage in our mind. So um, so there's no point to do that. And Tamanish, it's actually slower to do that as well. So that would be a fourth reason. Um, so it's slower. It's also slower to jump uh, between the passage and answers. So there are four good reasons why you should not stop to answer questions uh, while you're reading, okay? Uh, Z, it's uh, a language exam, so all the topics should be interesting for you. Uh, this is not a book that you're reading for entertainment, okay? It's an exam where you have to prove your English, so find it interesting. <clears throat> all right, uh, so uh, those are the four reasons, okay? Um, don't underline. So Mohammed says, can we underline the answer? Um, no, because you will probably remember it anyway. It's another good question, Mohammed. Zara Singh, uh, should I underline? Uh, we usually, it's another question uh, that we get asked. So should I underline? Um, and the answer is no. No. Um, because underlining is distracting it also breaks your concentration um, and um, uh, it may not be the right answer okay so uh, underlining again is a bad idea okay uh, this works so in um, chapters uh, or books for long information in school, but not for short uh, one-page passages. Okay, so uh, Mohammed is that it's a different story when you have um, like a thirty-page chapter in your science class that you have to remember, and then you're highlighting because thirty pages—that's a lot of information. But when you have two pages. Come on, girls, guys, you can do this. Two pages, okay? Um, you can remember the information. You don't need to underline, all right? Uh, and again, underlining takes time as well. So uh, sure, when you're reading a whole book or when you're reading a 10, 20-page article uh, for research, yeah, underline, highlight, that's a different story, okay? All right? Uh, just read. Just read. All right, um, here we go. So let's just read. Okay, so we have gods, we have mountains, we have visual information here. Let's just read. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go on to the next uh, paragraph. So uh, Barat is an ancient city and is believed to approximately be 2,500 years old. Though the historical record is unclear, historians think the original inhabitants of the area were the ancient Greek tribe known as the Dasareta. Later, the settlement became a Macedonian fortress in what was then southern Illyria. Uh, one of the most gruesome events in the town's history occurred in 200 BC when it was attacked by the Roman army led by Lucius Apostius. His army destroyed the city's defenses and killed every male citizen over the age of 15 in what might have been a terrible massacre. Okay, great. Uh, students, another tip. 
uh, when you're reading some um, tricky words that are difficult to pronounce in your mind or verbalize, like desaritae, which is probably some kind of Latin, um, or iliria, uh, please don't s stop and try to pronounce those words or don't try to figure out what those words are. They're obviously names, um, so just do your best. Disarat, Illyria, uh, Apustus, okay? Uh, nobody's going to judge that. You don't want to break your concentration or stop the flow, all right? So just read through. This is another important tip, okay? So tip. Here it comes. Make sure to practice just reading through difficult uh, words in the passages so you do not lose the overall ideas. Okay? Do not stop to try and figure out the meaning or pronunciation of such words, okay, whether they're names or some kind of technical words, okay, so be careful, all right, don't do that. You want to be fluid, when you're reading fluently, you have better understanding, okay, all right, um, so let's keep going here. During the Byzantine period, following the fall of the western half of the Roman Empire, Barat was known as Polaropolis, a name which was derived from Pulcheria, the sister of Roman Emperor Theodosius II. This name was not given casually. Pulcheria was highly respected throughout the empire and was considered a co-regent alongside her brother the emperor. Barat was given this name because it was an important center of culture, wealth, and beauty in the empire. Okay, so importantly here I'm visualizing um, Barat, ancient Barat, which at this time uh, was known under a different name, uh, named after a very powerful female leader. Okay, all right. Uh, let's keep going. So, the heart of Barat for centuries has been the castle atop a rocky hill on the northern bank of the Osum River. The citadel of Barat, as it is sometimes known, was began before the Roman invasion. Uh, rebuilt by Theodosius II in the 5th century CE and rebuilt again in the 13th century by the local Byzantine government. At its peak in the 1200s, the fortress housed thousands of citizens, uh, 20 churches, the city was overwhelmingly Christian, one mosque, and other shops and services. To this day, hundreds of Albanians live within the castle walls, though most of the churches have been destroyed and the mosque exists only in minor ruins. Much of the housing remains intact from the period. Wow, must be really Interesting, 13th century. So here we're visualizing the castle, the castle grounds, the buildings, the churches, the mosques, and the people living there today. So again, that chronological sequencing as we do this, right? The early modern period of Barat, 16th to 18th centuries, was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. Construction during this time reflected both the Ottoman influence and the influence of Islam. By 1670, the city was home to a Muslim majority, less than 100 years after being almost entirely Christian. The construction of this time period largely remains to the present day and is the origin of Barat's nickname the city of a thousand windows, as the Ottoman aesthetic favored relatively large and plentiful windows. This design, along with the city's layout along the hillside embankment of the Osum River, which allows visitors to see much of the city's housing at one time, gave the impression that Barat was a city dominated by windows. 
To this day, visitors to the city quickly understand the city's nickname as the windows continue to dominate the cityscape. Okay, so here we learn that in 1670, the Ottoman Empire ruled over this area and uh, it became known as the city of a thousand windows because of all of that Ottoman architecture and the use of windows. Fantastic. All right, so we're moving along in history. The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the rise of Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state in 1913. Albania endured Nazi occupation in the 20th century, as well as the iron-fisted rule of communist dictator Enver Hoxha from 1944 to 85. Hoxha's rule was commemorated on the side of a nearby Mount Sparag, one of the mythical giants from Barat's origin legend mentioned above, in 1968, with the colossal painting of his name, visible for miles, the letters, each 100 meters high and 60 meters wide, dominated the skyline above Barat for decades. If you visit Barat today, however, the mountainside letters look slightly different. In 2012, as part of a documentary film project, a 58-year-old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power washing and repainting, resulting in the word never, adoring the mountainside. Never again would the proud Albanian people fall into the grips of dictation, and never again would the people of Barat venerate their past oppressor. Barat, an ancient city which has seen rulers and regimes come and go, has been the one constant. From the Iranians, Romans, and Byzantines, to the Ottomans, Nazis, and communists, Barat has been through a lot. And still, the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken. All right. Uh, notice that beautiful play of words by the author, Thousand Windows Unbroken. Okay, uh, so uh, there we go. Um, that is uh, the city of a thousand windows. Okay, uh, commemorated, Dhruv, 012, um, think of memory to commit to memory. So when we commemorate, it means we uh, create a special situation like a statue, a painting, um, which holds the memory of a person or an event. Okay, so to commemorate means to hold the memory of someone. Okay. Amanjat, uh, oppressor. Think about the word press, to push. Okay, an oppressor is a person uh, or a government who uh, keeps the citizens or the population under negative pressure. Okay. All right. Uh, co-regent. A regent is a ruler over the land, a government uh, official. Co means another ruler. Okay. All right. Let's look at the questions and then answers. So let's go through these together. And I will show you how you can get the answers. Um, hopefully, you had some good visualization here. Okay. All right. So the beginnings, the mythical origin of Bharat involves a battle between two gods. Okay, here, clearly the answer was gods. Uh, concerning the affections of a certain woman named Tamor and Sparag, they live on today in the form of two mountains, okay, plural, surrounding the city of Barad. So uh, we got those uh, and we remembered those, so that's fine, okay. And then here we go, so a little bit more about the city. Violence strikes. Everybody probably remembers that with the Romans. Barat is thought to be about two 500 years old. Soon after this time, when it was a Macedonian fortress, 
the something destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Who killed? Not romance, Shaikh, but Roman right? Romans or Roman army. Yeah, both of those are okay. So Roman army or Romans. Okay. Romans destroyed the city and killed all males. Romans or Roman army. Both of those are okay. So Nick came on Roman army is okay as well. All right. All right. Looking good. All right. So um, let's go to the next one. Here we go. Later, Barat was given the name something because of its importance in the culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. Hmm. So what name was Barat given because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire? Uh, Bekjan says, Polcherine something, sister of the emperor. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that's where you want to check, Bekjan. But I remember something about that name. Uh, yeah. So now, because I read the passage, I know where to look. So I know it was somewhere in the first third. And here we go. So during the Byzantine period, following the fall of western half of the Roman Empire, Barat was known as Polcheriopolis, a name which was derived from Polcheria, the sister. So here you want to just very carefully uh, copy that over. So Polcheriopolis, okay, Polcheriopolis. So very carefully with a capital letter, copy it over, okay. So, Polcheri, Polcheriopolis, Polcheriopolis, okay? So, carefully copy that over, all right? Okay. Uh, Amanjat, a fortress is like a castle. It's a, a military building that's built very strong, like a castle. So a fortress is kind of a synonym for a uh, castle, Polcheriopolis. Okay. All right. So far, so good. So again, the reason why you want to read, visualize, keep the order is because you will be able to answer quick with accuracy and uh, give correct answers. All right, here we go. So guarding Barat, the fortress on top of Osum River's north bank is known as the something of Barat. Now, I remember this because I pictured it. Uh, Lydia says the citadel. You're missing the L, Lydia. Citadel, right? Citadel. Yeah, that's right. It's the citadel. Uh, citadel is like a big church. It's another way to say church. For those of you uh, who aren't sure, a large um, church-like structure. Okay, so uh, sorry, it's not it's, sorry, it's not a church, a citadel. Um, it's a large, um, uh, like a large fortress. Yeah, I just confused it with cathedral my bad a uh, citadel is like a fortress okay it's a fortress it's another way to say it so it's a large building kind of like a castle okay all right um like like a castle all right uh okay it is over 1500 years old and was repaired approximately 800 years ago it once held many religious institutions, including uh, something and 20 Christian houses of worship. So there was just one of these. Yeah, that was the mosque. That should be easy to remember. So there was just one. It was easy to 
um, visualize. So mosque, mosque, very good. Okay. All right, now we get to these seemingly challenging yes, no, not given questions. And we'll go through these with the same strategy as before. So first we have to figure out if it's given or not given, and then we can figure out if it agrees or disagrees with the author, okay? So the Ottomans had a significant influence on Islam during the early modern period. Hmm. Okay, so is it important to know for this passage about the city of Barat or the city of a thousand windows, whether or not the Ottomans had a significant influence on Islam. So is that important to know? Is it, is it important information to know? Important? For this city of a thousand windows? No. Therefore, not given. Okay? Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but it's not important when talking about the history of this, okay? So it's not given. 34, um, Barat's nickname derives from the Ottoman aesthetic that was favored during the early modern period. By the way, students, if I go back here, um, another way that you can figure out if this is important or not important is there anything about the city in this question? And the answer is no, right? So that's how you know uh, that it's not, okay? So here, this question is focusing on the Ottomans and Ottoman influence on Islam during the early modern period. Uh, there's nothing here about the city, so there's no relevance, okay? All right, number 34, Barat's nickname derives from the Ottoman aesthetic that was favored during the modern period. Here, right away, uh, we have the city of Barat. So when I ask, is it important? You immediately can say yes, most likely. So it's given, okay? Okay. Absolutely, it's given because uh, there's definitely some information there. So is it important? Yes, yeah, so it's given. So we know it's given. Uh, is it true or false? So is this true that its nickname, the City of a Thousand Windows, comes from the Ottoman aesthetic that was favored? Yeah, absolutely. The Ottoman architecture of using windows, right? So here, the answer is... Uh, yes. Okay. So make sure you put yes. Okay. Yes. So it's called the city of a thousand windows because the Ottomans during the 1600s built a lot of um, structures with windows. Okay. All right. Um, 35. Barat was ruled by Nazis and communists in the 20th century. So again, we see the name of the city. So when we ask important, again, we can quickly figure out that, yeah, I think so, because it's the history of the city. So it must be given. Okay? And is it true that both Nazis and communists ruled uh, Barat in the 20th century? So we know that Nazi rule was uh, between 39 and 45 during the Second World War when Nazis dominated most of Europe. So that must be true, right? Uh, 20th century means 1900s to 1999, okay? That's the 20th century. And yeah, that's true, okay? I think it is, all right? To me, it sounds like it is. So that would be yes. Nazis took over it, and then the communists took over it, okay? Now, again, if you're not sure, you could check the information, because if, as long as you read the passage, you'll know roughly where to look for that information, okay? Okay. 
All right. Um, here we go. Number 36, the modern Albanian state began in 1944. Is that important? So for Barat, is this important? Well, since Barat is part of Albania, I would say that 36 is important. Um, did the Albanian state begin in 1944? So this is where Mohammed Azad says, I would probably check this. So I think the answer is no, because I think it began later, um, like 1974, 1984, something like that. Um, but I will check this. Okay. So. All of them. Okay. So the end of the Ottoman Empire, and I know that it's near the end because we're coming up on fairly recent history. So the end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state in 1913. And I think for Dobbs very cleverly said that it's 1913. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, I thought it was actually later. I thought it was maybe some other rule in the region. But uh, 1913, so, uh, okay. Uh, the modern Albanian state began in 1944? No, right? Began in 1913, according to the author. So it's an N. All right, 37. Uh, some modern residents of Barat have strong negative feelings concerning... Albania's communist past. Okay, we have Barat, we have Albania, we have uh, residents. Important? Very likely. There's just so many elements that are part of this passage. So is it important? Yes. So it must be given. Okay, I can figure that out. Um, is it true? So uh, do uh, many or some of Barat's residents feel animosity towards um, the uh, communist past? Yeah, that was true. Yes. Uh, students, if you are reading this passage with me, this one should be a very easy answer. Um, there's a whole passage here or a whole, whole paragraph on that question. Have a look here. So, or half of a paragraph, I should say. In 2012, as part of a documentary film project, the 58-year-old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power washing and repainting, uh, resulting in the word never, never adoring the mountainside. Um, so they repainted these giant letters to read never um, against their past communist oppressors. Okay, it was very visual, very strongly emphasized in the end here that they were pretty uh, upset about uh, the communist dictator. Uh, here it is, uh, rule of the iron-fisted rule of communist dictator Enver Hoxha. They probably had a lot of headache from that, okay? So that was very, very clear okay, in that last paragraph. All right. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, Enver Hoxha was considered a hero by some Albanians. Number uh, 38. Okay. So... Is it important? For this passage? So did anybody visualize the hero uh, and her hoaxa? No, I didn't. So not given. Uh, so probably nobody saw this uh, uh, communist leader with this cape 
being like, ooh, it's the hero of uh, Albania. I didn't see that. Okay, I didn't picture this kind of hero image. Uh, so it's probably not given. Even though it's possible, because, I mean, they had uh, some giant letters uh, for his name or something, um, it seems like it's not given to me. So I'm not going to search. Okay, I definitely don't remember seeing or reading about heroes in this case. Uh, so I'm not going to search the passage. I will confidently write not given and then just leave it. Okay, um, and the last one here. Uh, Barat has been ruled by many peoples and governments, but the city continues to survive. Important? I think definitely there's a lot about Barat. So yes, it's important. So I know it's given. Is it true? So is it true that Barat has been ruled by many people and governments and the city continues? Yeah, it's true. Very good. A lot of you are saying, yeah, that's true. So the answer is yes. Okay. Yeah, Leah, very good. I would say yes, confidently yes. Okay, last question, everyone. Question 40, choose the correct letter A, B, C, or D. Write the correct letter in box 40. Uh, which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage three? In my own words, I would say that the main aim of passage three is to explain the history of... Okay, to explain the history and evolution of Barat, the city of a thousand windows. Okay, so if without reading this, so if I don't read this, if somebody just asks me, what was this passage? What was the goal of this passage? Okay. Um, then I would say, well, it's to explain the history and the evolution. Okay. Uh, Muhammad Azad is asking, how can I figure out the difference between not given and false? Uh, Muhammad, you shouldn't. First, you should figure out if it's given or not given, and then figure out if it's true or false. Okay, that's why you're being confused. Um, does that make sense, Muhammad Azad? So don't try to figure out if it's not given or false. Try to figure out if it's given or not given instead of false or not given. Okay. All right, um, so which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage three? Um, Barat has a long and fascinating history which continues to modern times. That seems pretty interesting. Uh, Barat survived Nazism and communism to persist to this day. Eh, I think there's more than that. Uh, Barat's and legacy underpins its reputation as the city of a thousand windows. I don't think that's true. Uh, Barat is an example of an ancient city whose people are intensely proud of its past. Yeah, I would say A is the best answer, A, because it's complete. A is the closest match to my answer. Okay, this is um, limited. Okay, this is false. And uh, <clears throat> this is limited. By limited, I mean that it's only part of the passage. So this is in the passage, but it's just part of it. This is in the passage, it's just a part of it. This is false. This is much more complete. Okay. All right, um, students, again, practice makes perfect. Once you practice this uh, and doing it, uh, you'll do much better. And the good news, everyone, when you practice these reading passages with the correct strategies is you will be able to use the same strategies in your college, university work as well, and they will be effective there as well. Okay? 
Uh, ventures a manjar are like projects, okay? Like business ventures, business projects, all right? Okay. Uh, yeah, Z, if you do not write capital letters for city or country names, they will be marked wrong. Uh, Hassan, you're very welcome. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Hope you got a lot of great information from the two passages today. Lots of good practice. Uh, again, these materials are coming from our websites. These ones are still in development, but uh, you'll find practice exams like it on the websites. AEHelp.com for academic IELTS and GIELTSHelp.com for general. And hey, if you sign up for this class, you can use the code R4TYJ and you'll get a 20% discount from the premium packages there. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me again. I'm Adrian signing out from beautiful Budapest. Stay healthy, stay strong, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for some more IELTS. Bye for now.